boyfriend's what? Coming? To electronic medium life is paranormal. I'm Judy and on this channel we research the afterlife using today's technology. We do talk a lot of true crime here and I do reach out to the spirit world to see if the spirits who have passed on can give us information about their situation. What if you got a call one day and the call said ma'am I'm so sorry to tell you that your daughter has been found deceased and you say, oh my God, what do you mean she's been found deceased? And they say, yes, ma'am, we're, we're so sorry. And you say, well, where, where is she? Where's my daughter? They say, well, ma'am, she was found about five miles down the road in the front yard of a house. You say, oh my God, in the front yard of someone's house? They say, yes, ma'am, um, we found her tied to a mailbox with her own shoelaces. What do you mean tied to a mailbox? Well, she was kneeling, sitting on her feet, tied to a mailbox that was 38 inches tall. And you say, well, who, who could have done this to her? Who, who would have tied her to a mailbox? Where were these shoestrings? How was she tied? And they say, well, she tied the two, two strings together from her tennis shoes and wrapped the shoestring around her neck and wrapped it around a 4x4 four four post 38 inches off the ground which happened to be the mailbox okay at this point wouldn't you be thinking something suspicious is going on the police seem to think after talking to some witnesses that it's suicide the girl that we're talking about here, her name is Jessica Renee Johnson. She was found on June 2nd, 2017 in a little town called Horn Lake, Mississippi. Now in 2017 I was looking up some information and it, it seems like there would have been probably around 20,000 people living in that area in 2017. Jessica Renee Johnson was 37 years old. She lived with her mom and her two older children. Her family and her friends said great things about her. She's beautiful and energetic, outgoing. She loved people. But apparently the family was a little bit concerned about some of the choices that Jessica was making. They weren't real thrilled about her boyfriend. They know that she took a lot of Xanax and maybe some other drugs. Her family says she liked to be pretty. She liked to dress up and have her makeup on. She wore heels and was a real girly girl. So Jessica does have a boyfriend named Garland Hart and they hung out often. They did drugs together and they kind of hung out in the neighborhood. What's interesting here is that the house that she was found tied to the mailbox at is Garland Hart's best friend. The owner of that property says that Jessica and Garland, whom Jessica usually called G, showed up on Wednesday hanging out, partying. But it's super interesting that they say no one saw her from 6 p.m. that night until 9.30 or 10.30 the next morning when a mail carrier found her body tied to the mailbox. The friend that lives there says that he has security cameras and that the security camera is pointing towards the mailbox but he doesn't know the code to look at the video or it may have been recorded over already he doesn't know how to access it etc. It was also noted by the people that were there at the party that G and Jessica fought that night that they had a pretty big fight they were outside arguing. She had taken the shoelaces out of her tennis shoes and threatened suicide. And how frustrated would you be? The police never treated this as a crime scene. They parked and walked all over the location where she was found. Um, the medical examiner ended up saying it was asphyxiation by suicide. And 
nothing was ever done. Nothing was ever done. So let's talk about a little bit about the timeline in the case. So on June 1st, 2017, which was Thursday, her mother says she kept reaching out to her with no answer. She says she always made sure that she uh, texted me and most times she would even send me her locations where she was. After not hearing from her and the coroner's office contacted the mother, it was the coroner that told her right away, we believe that your daughter may have committed suicide. The image that I'm going to show you here is a little disturbing, although it is blurred out. But you can see how she's sitting and how tall this tiny mailbox post is. And uh, you can see her purse between her legs. Looks like she has something in her hand that I can't really make out. Let's take a look. So do you think this is possible to commit suicide in this way? Um, you know, some other people that have been investigating, the, the family hired someone to help investigate, and, and he seems to think the way the string was tied around the neck, that there was a lot of pressure here in the front, not enough pressure here on the side to actually strangle or hang you. He also said that the location of her hand on top of her purse would probably not have been the location that her hand would have ended up in had she actually done this herself. Dr. Maurice Goodwin says, the medical examiner could have checked undetermined or pending investigation, you know, um, death by asphyxiation and not necessarily market suicide. Is it even possible to hang yourself from a 38 inch tall post like this with a shoelace? They also say if the shoelace was putting enough pressure around her neck here to strangle her that there would be a, notif a really noticeable mark or scar left behind, especially if she was alive when that happened. Dr. Goodwin says she did not tie this knot herself. It's tied around her neck and around the back of the post and I, I think I have a picture where I can show you. There's only this much sticking out how it was tied. So 38 inches is about 3 feet tall. That's probably barely going to come up to my hips. What else looks weird about this particular photo? Her purse. The way her purse is setting between her legs. Dr. Goodwin says, um, no, her hand probably would not have been just laying on top of her purse in this situation. If you really wanted to hang yourself, there's plenty of trees and other things around you could have done that from. Why did you choose a U.S. Postal Service mailbox? Or why would you? Based on statistics, women are more likely to commit suicide by taking pills. Jessica, um, I think I mentioned earlier, her drug of choice was Xanax. Although the coroner's office did say there was methamphetamines in her system. Maybe this is why police aren't taking a closer look at this. The body was cremated, which is really sad because there's no going back now to get more information. But the family was short on money, and as you know, we all know it's much cheaper, um, you know, to have someone cremated. If you look at her purse a little more closely, you can see that the metal strap has been ripped off. To me, that indicates a sign of a struggle or some sort of altercation. Something else was unusual about her. There are holes in her hands and her arms. Holes. Not all the potential evidence has been returned to the family. Some is just gone. The most recent suggestion was to take in the shoelaces and swab them for DNA and, oh, the police can't find them. Her clothes are also gone from the day that she passed away. They believe they were just burned. According to the family, the funeral director said Jessica's clothes were sent to him in a biohazard bag. Dr. Goodwin doesn't understand why that would be. Then there's this photo of all the police cars parked everywhere. They're parked too close to the body. They're parked too close to the crime scene. Officer Ro Moreno says potential witnesses were ignored and no one uh, could get the security video from this gentleman's home that he says was pointed directly at the mailbox. So the couple days before her death, Jessica was hanging out with her boyfriend at, the, at his friend's house and partying. They had been there since Wednesday night partying apparently. Another problem is Jessica's cell phone. They say the phone is locked and no one has the code, and because the police aren't investigating and won't get a warrant, no one will unlock her phone. 
Although, if there was no passcode on her phone in the first place, the boyfriend could have deleted any text messages, anything he didn't want anyone to see, and then added a passcode to it. When the mail carrier found her at 9, 30, 10 o'clock on Friday morning, they estimate she was probably dead around at least eight hours. Her teenage son received a text from her at 3.29 a.m. Friday morning. That means that had to, that text had to be super close to around the time that she passed away. In the message, she said she would be spending the day with G, her boyfriend. Her and her boyfriend had been together about two years at this point. One of Jessica's friends named Michelle said that her boyfriend tended to be a little bit abusive. So what would you do in this situation? Your daughter of 37 years old is dead. Nothing is being investigated. The evidence, the shoestrings are gone. Her clothing is gone. The guy that lives at the house that has video of the mailbox won't cough up the video. And because there's no warrant or anything going on with the case, you can't unlock her phone. The only thing I can do is try to get some more information today about her case. I'm going to reach out to the spirit realm. I'm going to use the PSB7 spirit box and we're going to record some sessions and see what we get. Let's give it a try. Okay, today we're asking for Jessica Renee Johnson. Jessica Renee Johnson, you died under suspicious circumstances. There's a lot of people who love you and are very concerned. We'd like to get some more information about that if we could today, please, from any spirits that are willing to help. I'm going to turn on the PSB7 spirit box, as always. I may try a dowsing rod session. I'm not sure yet. Maybe that'll be session number two, video two. Let's turn this on and see what we get. Turn it up. Jessica Renee Johnson. Jessica or anyone that's going to be able to help us is here with us. Can you tell us what happened to you, Jessica? Tell us who killed you. Can you tell us what happened? Can 
you tell us if there is video about what happened? Is there video of you that he has, that the homeowner has, that he's not sharing? Can you tell us what time it happened? Who was involved? Tell us the story. Jessica, we're here to listen. This is going on YouTube for everyone to see. Your boyfriend's what? Coming? Thank you. 